Hello, algorators, soulmates. This <laughs> I'm Al Reynolds, and welcome back to my channel and the show, The Court of Public Opinion with my legal beagles. Now, before we dive in, I would like to thank all of my subscribers for joining me. And remember, hit that like button. If you have not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And also leave a comment because we love your engagement. So everybody, to show me that you're supporting the show and you like the content, put that fax emoji in the chat right now. That's the fax, F-A-X emoji in the chat right now for the engagement. We want to make sure that everyone is taking advantage of engaging with me for the show. Also, before we get started, I wanted to share with everyone once again and know that we're not going to continue to do this every show, but because this is new, we are sharing with you what the concept of the show is. I am your host, and the nature and the premise of the show is to be very fast-paced. Tons of questions, tons of topics, disruptives, and sometimes over the top. We can be rude, but it might be messy as well. Think of it in your mind as Nancy Grace meets Rapid Fire meet Fox Souls Face Off. Yeah, there's going to be plenty of cutting people off. It's going to be plenty of disagreeing, agreeing. It might be some shouting. It may be talking, telling people to be quiet, or it may be a little bit of all of the above. Be sure, though, that you keep taking notes and pay attention, because I can promise you in every show there will be something that you can learn. All right, so be sure also, if you missed last week, I did a series called Diddy Do It, and that was related to P. Diddy and his accusations on the complaint by Rodney Jones. Be sure to catch up on part one, two, three, four, and five. All right, so tonight, let's see who the two legal beagles that are going to be joining us tonight will be. First, we have the wonderful attorney, uh, Simone Redwine, is joining us tonight. Good evening. And also, we have the beautiful corporate entertainment attorney coming back tonight from Friday's uh, Ladies' Night, Jordan Williams. Welcome, counselor. Hello, hello. <laughs> All right, everybody. So look, this is the lineup. We talked about it on Friday. So tonight we're going to delve into a lot of the the divorce court, the divorce law, uh, the divorce cases that are presently going on in the entertainment industry. We're going to see why Jenny May is asking the courts to hold off on enforcing that prenup because she says that Jeezy is hiding his assets. And that's not fair because she does not want the prenup to be enforced until all of his assets are put on the table. Do you think Jeezy's hiding assets from Jeannie Mae? Do you think this is a matter? Because rumor has it she makes more money than him anyway. We're going to get to the bottom of it right here on In the Court of Public Opinion. Next, we're going to talk about that messy divorce that's happening between Portia and Simon. <coughs> now, I've seen mess, but I have never seen a mess with so many legs like this one. Now, he wants... So many things now. I've never seen a man demand so many things from the woman that's divorcing him. He wants to see her contract and what it looked like as it relates to the Real Housewives of Atlanta. He said that she committed domestic violence against him, and he wants the courts to know about it. Do you guys think that Simon's doing too much? Or does Simon just need to divorce, give her her divorce, because she wants him gone? All right, then we're going to talk about Tiana Taylor and Iman's divorce. Wow, now this one really blew my mind as a man because Tiana Taylor said that a woman was seen in bed with him by her child. And psychologically, this is having an effect on their children. So are we saying that a man can never have a woman in his bed around the kids? Is this legal, my legal beagles? We'll break this down. And last but not least, we're going to talk about Joy Chavez and Drea. And it's funny, we're going to talk about many of us keep saying that this is their payday for the next 18 years with their kids. But Legal Beagle Red Wine is going to tell us how this may not be a payday after all, especially if it's in the state of Texas. All right, everybody, put those fax emojis in the chat. <coughs> Support of Attorney Red Wine, please put those wine glasses in the chat. And for the lovely entertainment attorney, Jordan Williams, Put those uh, blue hearts in the chat as we start off tonight's show. Someone's background, though. Someone's got kids in the background. We need to mute that. We need to mute that, um, Bailiff. Bailiff, we're hearing kids in the background. All right. So let's get started. 
Awesome. We've taken care of that issue. All right. So first up, Jeezy and Jeannie Mae. All right. So, so she's saying now, if I understand correctly, Attorney uh, Redwine, that she does not want to enforce the prenup at this time. Now, the prenup had some type of clause in it as it relates to their infidelity, and the infidelity would execute the divorce, right? And it would execute the prenup. So explain to me, why is it that she feels like because he's not showing his assets, why is it important that he show his assets before she starts divorce proceedings? Right. So a prenup is not valid unless there is a full and complete disclosure of all assets assets on both sides. The person who's uh, uh, assumed to have a lot of money as well as the person um, who has fewer assets. Without a full disclosure, you can't provide what's called informed consent, meaning you can't sign away from your, your right to something if you don't even know it exists. Here, Jeannie Ma is claiming that what he disclosed was just some bare bones information. So as an example, if you have property, you have to list all of your property, your mortgage, what you understand it to be worth. But also, and this is a mistake a lot of business owners make, you have to disclose your trust and all LLCs. Anything that you have control over or that could be an income stream for you. And here, I believe the issue is that Jeezy had a trust. And I did a background check. And what I was able to find is that there were times where he, during the marriage, where he moved assets into and out of that trust. And so if he did not inform her that he had a, the ability, not just the trust, but the ability to put assets like his other properties in and out, that could be grounds to make the prenup invalid in addition to infidelity. So there's two ways it could be invalid. What do you think, Jordan? I think that's absolutely correct. I actually learned a very cool tip from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Sutton Strack, where she said when she went through her divorce, she actually hired a forensic accountant. And she right. found out that she was the owner of a sports team and several other companies that she had not even ever heard of. So I think, you know, possibly in Jenny Mai's case, she may want to call Sutton Strack and get the same forensic account and see what Jeezy has going on at the bottom. Now, let, me ask you, let me ask you ladies this. Now, are we saying that this is important? I understand about moving assets and all that great stuff, but it sounds like to me that she's building a case to, to create an environment where it shows that he is wealthier than her. Therefore, if he makes more money than her, she can go after child support payments for him. Is this is this a is this far fetched to think that this is just a move for for her to try to get more money out of him? I think it's twofold. I think on one hand, yes, she may want more money. She may be thinking long term child support. But on the other hand, if I'm being completely honest, and I love Jeannie Mai, I don't think she wants to get divorced. She loves this man. She has mm. gone through this divorce kicking and screaming. So even if, you know, this ends up in nowhere land, she would have at least delayed the divorce for some amount of time. I think she wants her man back. So I'm okay. I'm all in support of it. But I, I do think that it's a twofold problem. It's not just about the money. Hmm. Correct. I, I think so, too. And, and at the end of the day, just like you referenced Sutton, one of my favorite prenups um, is actually Coach Deion Sanders. I feel like if you are going to have a prenup, the way his attorney executed and what his attorney did is this was the prenup between Dion and his ex-wife, Pilar, the mother of the three kids. So um, because one of Jeannie Ma's uh, concerns is that she signed the prenup a day before the wedding. We all know you never want to do that with a prenup because they can claim financial duress, embarrassment, that those were the reason they signed. With Dion, his wife signed it like two days before and she was allegedly pregnant, but the court upheld it because the prenup at the time of signing, he gave her a hundred thousand dollar signing bonus. So mm. 11 years later, when she went to the court and said, Oh, your honor, I don't think you should uphold the prenup. The judge, which would have uh, limited her to 2 million instead of much more. The judge said, well, wait a minute. Did you sign it? Yes. She said, did you get the signing bonus of a hundred thousand? Yes. And did you spend it? She said, well, yes. He said, well, then if you spent the money, it's valid. And that's what happened. I, I just don't feel this is my whole confusion here around them. Okay. So, 
Okay, you don't think she wants to divorce him. She, you think she she still loves him. He don't want you no more, Jeannie Mai. He don't want you. I'm sorry. He don't want you. All this tap dancing you're doing, all this prolonging the inevitable, the inevitable that you're doing, it's not going to work beautiful because we know one thing about Jeezy is that once his mind is made up and he's moved on, he's moved on. So what are you actually doing? All you're doing right now is building up a law bill on both sides for no reason. Let the man out. I mean, get if you want if you want to see his assets, that's fine. I'll show my assets, but that I feel like that that shouldn't hold up the execution of the prenup. And she can send him over here. I will. I will take him. Jesus. <laughs> okay. Well, why do y'all think? Well, why do y'all think that they're getting the divorce? And she seems so blindsided. Now I heard some rumors from the rumor mill, but she seems so blindsided. She said, "I don't think it's infidelity because if it were infidelity, uh, she moved." Uh, he moved to seal the case. She actually opposed it and said, no, no, no. I want all of this to be public because I believe she, um, like Jordan saying, she wants her man back. And if she has to use the court of public opinion for people to empathize and sympathize with her to get this man to come back to her, she don't take it any which way. See, but see, see attorney Williams and attorney Redwine, this is the female side that I need you guys to tell me what hormone or what, what, what. <laughs> What chromosome this comes from? Because I don't get it. You think battling this man in the public eye, embarrassing him about his assets, embarrassing him about his infidelity, embarrassing him about, you know, him wanting to be involved in his child's life is going to get him back? That just doesn't make any sense to me. Forcing, forcing, you're, you're muted, Simone. Forcing him to spend money that he does not have to spend on a lawyer to deal with your erratic behavior legally it's not a good uh, it's not a good way to get your man back it's not great but it works it works a lot of the time how many times do you hear men that say and stay with women they're unhappy with and say it was cheaper to keep her sometimes women will do whatever they will use the kid or you're not going to see your kid they use fear when they have nothing else now rumor mill the, what i've heard is that there were issues with her personality she was not nice she was mean that she was initially when she got him, she was kind to him. But the way she treats other people became a problem. And what was interesting is so far, that's kind of the only logic that makes sense, given that he said, whatever it is, it is it is not fixable and that it is not fidelity. So it sounds like there are some literal issues with he don't want to come home to her no more. Well, uh, the thing that I heard from the rumor mill was that they had some cultural differences that she wanted to move her family into his Atlanta home. And he, yep. he thought it was just, you know, a visit. It turned into a move. And he was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And she felt yes. disrespected, you know, because he, he wouldn't allow her entire family to move into his home. Now, this is a rumor. I don't know if that's, that's necessary. I heard that one, too. But yeah, I don't well. it's cheating. We're, we're it doesn't we're sound gonna, yeah, yeah, that he say, she say, uh, you got brothers and mamas moving in and you all, you didn't sign up for that, even though they're great babysitters. We all know that. Ah, la, la, la. I don't know. I don't know if that would make Jeezy just walk away from his marriage like that. I think there's something deeper going on here. I think that someone who only stays in a marriage that short a period of time feels deceived in some yes. way or yes. if you weren't deceived then you like grossly deceived if you weren't deceived then you feel like hmm you uh somebody cheated on me all right but let's move on speaking of cheating let's go on down here to atlanta now atlanta is really showing it's complete a s s these days especially when we talk about portia and simon's divorce I have, like I've said, I've seen some ugly divorces and I've seen some ugly divorces. But this one right here, it has so many layers. There has It has so many moving parts to it. I mean, I, I don't understand how you have a baby by another man, right? You never married him. You had a baby by him. You go over to this married couple's house on the show. You end up picking that man, picking that lady's husband from her, marrying him, right? creating this great, I think they probably had 5,000 weddings across every continent in America, took us along on the journey. Everybody was so happy for Portia. Portia was so happy <coughs> that she quit two of her jobs. <laughs> she walked away from the Real Housewives of Atlanta, 
She walked away from Dish Nation. Everybody loved her on all those platforms. And I thought that she gave all of us in entertainment the peace sign. Like, I'm good. I got me a super wealthy man, and I don't have to do TV anymore, and I don't have to work. Only to find out, guys, only to find out less than two years later, she wants a divorce. All right, Legal Beagles, now what is really going on? And not only does she want a divorce, but Simon is really stepping into the chat. I would have thought that maybe he was on The Real Housewives. I thought maybe he had a peach the way he's rolling out all this drama. I mean, come on. He's saying Portia committed domestic violence on him. He said he wants to see her contract with Real Housewives of Atlanta. All right, uh, Attorney Williams, tell me what is going on with this case and why why do you think she's asking for a divorce? What are her grounds for the divorce? Do we know from the divorce um, filings what that is? And what is Simon doing with all this distracting media that he's providing right now? Whoa, we need to get Simon a peach, okay? He is keeping the girls going in Atlanta. While they're recasting, go, go down and see if Simon is available. <laughs> I think he might be. But I saw online in the divorce filings, I think it just says, you know, the typical irreconcilable differences. But I saw that apparently Portia's text message to Simon was actually included in some of the court filings where she basically said that Simon's job was to protect her and Pilar and he didn't do that. So a lot of fans think that she's hinting at his immigration situation, you know, where I think since the 80s or 90s, he's been through a series of uh, immigration cases, deportations, and, and has undergone different aliases. And Portia, according to the filings, didn't know about any of this until we learned about it. So I could totally see her feeling blindsided, feeling like, you know, she found her person. And then I'm hearing, you know, you're, you're Bob and Joe and Tim. And, and you've been back and forth from here and there for 20, 30 years, that's deception. So, you know, if that's the case, I think that's why. I think I you're... I will also say, um, I think that what I read about Simon cease and desist, whew, he's really shaking the table. He tell appeared, him here, I'll tell him. He apparently has sent a cease and desist to Portia so she can't speak about the divorce in the upcoming season of Real Housewives of Atlanta. Now that's messed up, Simon. You know we want the team. Now this is a deal. Is that cease and desist actually valid? Can he actually do that to her? Yeah, maybe, maybe not. But the thing that the the fight that he does not want to pick that I think he's inching close to is fighting with NBC Universal. Because now you're messing with their show, you're messing with content, you're messing with one of their main talent, right? So sending a cease and desist to Portia is one thing. Sending a cease and desist to the network, which I don't, I don't know that he's done, uh, that's a whole different story. But if he's serious about not wanting this divorce thing spilled, that might be what he wants to do because that's not stopping anyone else from the cast from talking about the divorce. Well, see, this is what I look at. When I see what he's doing, I see him making a big commotion about bringing her back on the show and not being able to use him or anything related to him as content for the show. I think it's a brilliant play. It may not be the smartest thing to do, but if I was him, I would send a cease and desist to everybody. I would send it to the production company. I would put, send it to the distributors, whatever show, whatever network that it appears on. I would send it to everybody so everyone could say, okay, wait a minute. If we can't talk about any of this on The Real Housewives of Atlanta, then what exactly can she talk about? How valuable is she? And do we as a network want to battle with this guy who allegedly may have money and who could keep us tied up in the courts for a long time on the liability around what comes out of her mouth? That's number one. Now, this is what I want to ask you, Attorney Redwine. Mm -hmm. Why, and ladies, this is a question for my, my female legal beagles. Why in the world is someone like Portia not doing a background check on the man that she's marrying who's supposed to be a gazillionaire, multi-triple millionaire who owns all this stuff? Why are you not doing a background check before you get in bed with him? Absolutely. I, I don't know. But what we know about Portia, we know she is beautiful. We know... Um, 
she's dynamic. We know she's funny. And we also know that one of her gifts do not include critical thinking. That's not her gift, right? This was the young lady who thought that the Underground Railroad was actually a choo-choo train. So, I, but I also believe I can relate to her in that she <laughs> really traffics on hope. Every time she meets somebody, she falls in love quickly. We see, we've seen her on the show fall in love with people within a month and things like that, right? Even it, it, with a different guy, but also with her baby dad. They knew each other hardly any time. And with Simon, after a month, he proposed. I think she wants to be loved so much like Risa teased the hell like I've been that she just went ahead and she jumped in and she assumed based on the stuff that he had in the public platform, like why would anybody lie who's with such a public figure? But you're right. And it's and it makes me wonder, like, I wonder if her girlfriends warned her. I believe her girlfriends tried to tell her and she said, oh, no, y'all, it's fine. It's going to be fine. Plus, remember, uh, when she first got with Simon, he was still married. So she probably thought, oh, this was the life that Fallon had. So all of this must be consistent. Now, can I get into some of the lies and the scamming and how it got us to this year divorce? Please do. Okay. <laughs> so most importantly, what I found most interesting is the, is the first question is, Portia is claiming she didn't know about all of this lying and the scamming. Now, when she referenced um, that she felt his first job was to protect her and her daughter. I believe that in part what she's talking about is if you're not even allowed to remain in the country legally, that's going to break my daughter's heart. He's now seeing you as a dad. So what happened was for um, Simon, Simon got here initially in like the 80s. He got here on a travel visa. So which meant he probably had some money over there in Africa. Right. He got here on a travel visa overstayed. Then he paid a woman to marry him, and it was as a sham marriage. The government decided at that time that it was a sham marriage because they interviewed her. And when they did, she said, we've been married two years. We've never lived together, and we never consummated the marriage. So the sham marriage was initially how, how he tried to get citizenship. When that didn't work, he was still here waiting on that. He started committing crimes. Scamming, scamming, credit card fraud. We all know they you know, people do it to this day. This, and then he stole someone's identity and used that to remain after being deported for his felonies, multiple felonies. Fast forward, the court documents actually say that he tried more than four times to get citizenship and was rejected. Though he actually applied a week before the wedding and still got rejected. Now, when he applied then, he was trying to apply under the fake identity. Now, it's the same last name, so it was likely a relative of his, so he probably thought he could get away with it. When the government found out, they told him, hey, 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 we've been told you, we're not letting you be a permanent citizen, okay? They just defined that in January. That's when she found out, and then a month later, she files for divorce. But what was most interesting, her filing says, I, I am filing, and we are in the current state of what's called a bona fide separation. So here's the T. Here's the legal. Put your, put your little red wines in the chat. Here's the legal T. <laughs> because of his history, the only way he can stay in America is marriage. The only way. The only way he can stay in marriage. But by her filing the divorce petition and saying, we're no longer a bona fide marriage, we are separated, that removes it. That removes his ability to stay here based on their marriage. So now, the only way Simon can stay in America is if he claims domestic violence. Because the government has created an exception, the only exception that will apply here, and that is to protect immigrants who are being abused by their spouses. Hmm. So even if you came here illegally, even if you committed crimes, the only way you can stay is if you're married to someone and you are able to allege they committed domestic violence. That's what he's just done. Not only does it let you do that, but the second thing is when you're married, when there's a pending divorce, you cannot get the other person out of the house until the divorce is final or you allege domestic violence. So now he's trying to get a two for one, it appears, by alleging that. And as well, in the prenup, the prenup actually says that uh, when there is what's called an event of dissolution, which is likely her filing for divorce, that Portia gets to stay in the house 
And Simon has to leave. He can keep his cars there, but Simon must leave. So that is one of the main provisions Portia is right now seeking to hold up. But if he can prove domestic violence, he wins. He gets to stay in this country and he don't have to move out the house and can put her. Well, you know, having bringing out guns and goons is a smart on Portia's side, because if I have any type of camera around my house, I have video footage of you coming to my house with a goon, with a gun. And I'm going to tell the public and hey, you don't have to you don't have to share. You don't have to convince a judge of too much with that video footage right there. Now, hold on. This is my question. And I, I, I think most people would ask this question as well. He was just married to Fallon. Fallon is a U.S. citizen. Why didn't he get his U.S. citizenship after being married with her, not only consummating the marriage, but having kids with him? How, what? Tell me, Legal Beagles, how was that even possible? I think he was lying to her, too. And also, this is this man's fourth marriage. He didn't want to stay with none of these chicks. No, so that's not my if, question. That's not my question, attorney. Not my, red wine. Okay. my question is, if you, the only way that he could get his citizenship, because you said the only way that he could get his citizenship was to marry a Portia. And why did he not get his citizenship while being married to Fallon? I'm, and they've been married for a little while. I'm She's a U.S. You, citizen. I'm telling you, the reason he didn't do it, if he would first have to say, I don't already have citizenship. He has not disclosed to any of the wives that he doesn't already have permanent citizenship. So number one is he has to say, hey, I lied to you. I'm not actually a citizen. And number two, sorry, I'm missing a nail over here. Number uh -huh. two, if you do it based on marriage, you got to stay married to this person for years. And I do not believe he intended to stay married to Fallon uh, or know. anyone Mm, attorney red white i don't know they have kids together they have more than one no they he, have he, he balance they have a, don't have a kid they don't have a kid not no, together sir. they don't have not together they have them separate though how long were they Correct. married though they were at least married for what three years four years two or three, three years. years two or three years i, I would have started that prior. i think i would have that that's that's longer than portia well, I and mean, because he thought the other would, would would go through. He thought he could get it on his own. Why get it? Why be attached to a woman for 10 years when you can get it on your own? I'm sorry. Go ahead, attorney. Jordan. No, that, that's exactly right. I think that he thought he had other avenues. And this was like mm. his plan Z is to have to need a woman to help him get citizenship. So I agree, you know, say what you want about Fallon or Portia. I, I agree with attorney Redwine. I think they were both lied to. I think that Simon had been holding himself out as ha already having his citizenship. And as far as the background check, I mean, yeah, they could have done one. And, and I, I know there were rumors around Atlanta. I think one of the girls even said something to Portia on camera about right. the yeah, guy. Yeah, for sure. she's, she's been so, warned. I I'm think she's a hopeless romantic. She thought she was getting the real deal, unfortunately. Hmm. All right. You know, I'm gonna let I'm gonna I'm gonna let you two breathe on this one about <laughs> I didn't know. I'm in love. I'm not gonna check. There is no way in H E L L am I going to marry a gazillionaire who's supposed to have this great life and I not know where that money came from. I know it's not coming from that restaurant in Midtown Atlanta. I know that it's not coming from a trust because I met your parents. Y'all y'all got me messed up in here believing, oh, she was so in love. And because she was blinded by her love, she trusted him. But I'm going to let y'all off. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to let you. Hold on, someone... hold on. Hold on. I'm going to let you off until Attorney Williams and Red Wine. Because we all know, even dating nowadays, you run them through the ringer. You run men through the ringer nowadays, even dating. So for you to tell me and have me believe that two women did not do more than a Google search on this gazillionaire before marrying him is very short-sighted. But all right, speaking of short-sighted, let's move right along to Tiana Taylor and Iman's divorce. Now, this one's got me really excited. I can't wait to dive in with my legal beagles about this because <clears throat> Tiana is saying my kids saw my ex-husband with another woman in the bed. Oh, my goodness. Does that mean, if I'm hearing this correctly, she has hired now a child psychologist. And she wants the child psychologist to lean in on the effects that these kids seeing 
him in bed with another woman may have on their mental stability. All right, Red Wine and Williams, let me hear this perspective on this. Now, are you trying to tell me that a man that's divorcing his wife that has kids now has to be concerned about who that those kids see in bed with, see him in bed with? What's the legal jumbo here and why is this even valid? What makes what law makes this valid? Let's go to you, Attorney Redwine. Okay, so the answer is yes. And I, I learned this because one of my whole home girls, okay, she was a mistress and she started dating her boss, right? And she was dating her boss. They moved in together because the wife found out, kicked him out, he moved in with her. Well, the wife was a lawyer and in the divorce decree ordered that um, he not have any, chill, um, any overnight guests that were females while he had possession of the children. And she came to me and she asked me, she was like, is this okay? Did he, why did he sign this? And I can't believe he did all that. And I looked it up and I researched it. And that's actually standard in most states. Anyone can ask for that. So what it is, is because they're married, um, Tiana has every right to tell the court, wait, I do not want, while he has possession of my kids, any woman of the opposite sex staying overnight. Mm. And so the law says, unless they are married. Now, if they were married, that is permissible. But if they are not married, the court, the judge, nine times out of 10 will do so because it protects the kids. Because if we flip the genders, right? If this was a mom who had a boyfriend and a young daughter, that dad could say, whoa, I don't feel comfortable with you moving a man into the house with my daughter. And the court would say, you're right. Until they are married, that man cannot stay overnight, which means he can't move in either. I'm so confused by this. I, somebody's got to help me out because if I hear what you're saying correctly, it's not just because they're going through a divorce. So let's just say hypothetically, Iman and Tiana are completely divorced. Not going through a divorce, but are completely divorced. Are you saying to me right here on my good Beyonce internet that... Tiana could say, we're divorced. You can go on with your life. I can go on with my life. But you cannot be seen in front of our kids with another woman in your bed unless you're married to her. Is Absolutely. that what you're saying to me? That is the rule. And, and I'll give you one better. If we use the example, there was an episode of Love and Hip Hop. There was Young Jock and his wife, Kendra. And the issue was young Jock was talking to his baby mom and the baby mom kept saying, when am I going to meet your wife? When am I going to meet your wife? All in the comments, people were saying it, it the what because the wife said, I don't know. I don't want to meet her. They kept mm. saying, oh, you should go to child support court and say that your child ain't going over their house because you haven't met her. I uh, can't do it. Even more than that, the law says because they're married, you don't have a choice. Baby girls come over here. But if they were just boyfriend and girlfriend, that's right. You could even prevent your partner from moving in with someone of the opposite sex, or you could prevent your partner from, um, if they're already living with someone, that person got to move out if the judge orders this rule. I'm devastated. <laughs> to add to that, something that I've seen on TV and in real life you can also get a court order to prevent your kids from calling the other person mommy or daddy or any mm, or daddy. What? people get petty and wow court. people get so very what, wow so, so what about stepmothers or stepfathers so the thing that so, I wait, wait, so, so let me hold on i didn't mean to cut you off so if future wanted to be petty <laughs> he could say that i don't want right Sierra and Russell, I don't want Russell to call, I don't want my son to call Russell daddy. No, because they're married. That right. only applies to unmarried people yes. because the, the, the premise of the law is what is in the best interest of the child. Got it. So and they're where they're not committed, got it. Okay, that got creates it. the issue. All right, I was getting ready to so, nervous there for Using that same example though, Sierra could say, well, future, you have a different girlfriend every month. So let me go to court 
on you to make sure that I have approval over which girlfriends are around my child or wow. can spend the night when my child is there or who my child can call mommy, stepmommy, or whatever the case may be, which my opinion is that that's why you probably see a lot of kids calling their step parents by the first name. Okay, so the, one more Brilliant. question. One more question, because you know, for a lot of people, you can't, they can't afford to get divorced, right? So a lot of people will be separated, you know, move out or whatever. But if if the mother wanted to be petty, she technically, could, you know, even though she's not legally divorced, she could go to the courts and say, hey, courts, we're not really divorced. And if that's the case, I don't want my kids around. None of those little scallywags that be coming through to see my ex-husband uh, spending the night and, and sleeping in his bed when my kids are around. Is that what I'm hearing? That's what you're hearing. I mean, it makes me wonder if we went on down to Huntsville, what is that? <laughs> that, that <laughs> You just say it. <laughs> now, just to clarify, though, I do think some form of a divorce or separation proceeding has to be filed, right? So as long as that's on file, you can request things like that. But if the two of you guys are just happily married, you can't ask the court to intervene in your parenting. Agreed. Mm. All right. Well, man, you guys have taught me some new stuff tonight. And that's the purpose of this show right here. We bring on our legal beagles to give us the legal jargon and to give us the laws. I mean, I, I literally have learned something that it has taken me 50 years to learn. And that is during a divorce and even after you can write in your divorce decree that you don't want your kids to see your ex with their new woman in bed with them in front of the kids, unless the two of them are married. That's right. No overnight guests of the opposite sex. They got to go come eight, nine o'clock. Bye-bye. Well, you know, I would be this messy if I was Iman. Sorry for Tiana fans. I'm a fan of hers as well, but I would pay them kids some money because I'm sure Tiana is not just sitting over in her bed by her lonesome, she's hot, she's sexy, she can get anybody she wants. No, oh, of course, Tiana. Look, Tiana is that's a bad one, that's a bad one. The body, right? Woman, man, she could have anything she wants. Anything, Brand. actually. Oh, no, I was gonna say it made me think about this law as well because the law is structured to say no one of the opposite sex. But you know, they do wild stuff. She sometimes she be with girls, she be with boys, right. sometimes she gay, sometimes, sometimes she not gay. So Allegedly. it's interesting. Alle no, she said she said on the Breakfast Club that they do that. Okay. So technically, as long as her overnight guest is another lady, it wouldn't be in violation of the standard rule because the standard rule says opposite sex. Mm -hmm. He'd have to go in there and be like, uh -uh, he liked them too. She liked them too. <laughs> in the judge final, we'll probably order. So who, who would, how would he, how would he debate that legally? He would have to add that clause. Yeah, it, it, it's literally it is a default clause if asked in most states. It mm -hmm. just has to be requested. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, ladies. The night just got even more interesting because we're going to talk about Joy Shavis and Drea next, and we're going to think we're going to talk about you know in the chat whenever we see this. And this is the interesting thing that I learned about Joy <clears throat> when I was talking with Attorney Williams is Joy has, this will be her third child, correct, with, you know, a very influential man, whether he's an entertainer or an athlete. And rumor has it that she has none of them on child support. You know, we know that Drea is also expecting uh, with a child from a 21, 22 year old in which we don't know what that child support situation would be, but according to attorney Redwine, it may not be that cash bag that she thinks it is because in the state of Texas, there's a law that puts a max on the amount of child support that you can actually receive. Okay, attorney Redwine, talk to us about why for Drea, this might not be the cash day that everybody in the chat is saying that it is for her. Right. So I'm a Texas, I'm a Texas based attorney, although I take cases nationally. And what many people don't believe is we are home of the Dallas Cowboys. Right. And Joey Chavez is having a child by one of the Dallas Cowboys. And um, 
Drea is having one by the Houston Rockets. Well, Texas is one of the few states that has a cap on child support. The cap on child support is $2,300 a month, or, or approximately $2,300 a month for one child. It goes up if there are more children. But that cap is there. Um, whether that makes that man makes like one hundred and twenty thousand or nine million, because it goes by twenty percent of the income maxed out at twenty three hundred dollars a month. So what that means is that even though these guys are first round draft picks bringing in five ten million a year, each of those ladies is only entitled to twenty three hundred per month for that child and. If they want anything more, they can petition the court for like, let's say they want daycare, extracurriculars and stuff. They can petition the court, but the guys actually have the right to cut the check directly to the daycare, directly to the extracurriculars. So if you try to get rich having a baby by athlete, don't have one and don't bring that baby to Texas. No. Mm -hmm. Let me ask the question. I was going to say, do like Tristan Thompson's baby mama. So you got to take the kid. Move to California. Go, move to California. <laughs> and that's how she got. I think she gets 12000 a month. That's right. She got on the airplane. Okay. Mm. So let me ask you Please. this question real quick. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. I got a substance in my throat tonight. Okay. Now, just because they work in Texas, is Joy, does Joy live in Texas? Or Great do we point. know? Because see, that's, this so is it, what I want to clarify for our listeners. Okay. Now, they can work in Texas, but say they met, they flew the girl into Texas from Las Vegas, and she lives in Las Vegas. She's pregnant now back in Las Vegas with the kid. Does that child support maximum still apply or no? Excellent point. It goes by where the child will be, where the child resides. So if the boys were my, if the, the guys, the fathers were my clients, what I would tell them to do, Call up my homegirl at uh, Fast Labs and Grapevine, right near where the Cowboys are, are located. They have DNA testing that you can get done while she's still pregnant. So the law says if you DNA test while she's pregnant, which, by the way, guys, now is only a test on the arm, no injection. Once that test comes back and says it's yours, you can immediately petition to have everything done based on Texas law. And then they'll get Texas, even though she's pregnant because she keeps coming back and forth. Otherwise, if the baby's born, it goes by where the baby resides. So attorney mm -hmm. Williams, let's get your public, let's get your uh, professional opinion on this. Could this be why Joy Chavez, as far as we know, does not have any of her men that she has babies from on child support? I mean, I actually think that she's a little bit smarter than we give her credit for. She probably gets way more money by not having them on court ordered child support than we really can think of, right? She owns her, she owns businesses. I, I think she has like her fashion line. She has her fitness thing going on. But I'm pretty sure, you know, Bow Wow and Future and now uh, uh, Diggs, I'm pretty sure they're probably informally on some sort of support yes. for, the, for the children, which I think is way smarter. And I believe, speaking of Diddy, is probably what his, baby's mamas was doing as well not taking him right. to, to get formal child support but getting way more money than they would have gotten from the court by doing it informally all right yeah okay i actually um i actually have a friend in here in texas where he was doing above and beyond you know the minimum that texas required he actually bought his baby's mom he, he bought a condo let her live there bought her a mercedes etc and was giving her like 5K a month, although she had no bills. And uh, basically she got upset with him. He wanted to bring the child to his mother's birthday, like 70th birthday. She said, no, not unless I can come. He was like, we're not together. He went, he goes to court on it because she fought. In this Texas court, the judge told the mother, do you want the good news or the bad news first? She said, uh, oh. the good news. The judge said, the good news, the child was four years old at this point. The judge said, the good news is, I'm not going to make you pay back what you owe him. The bad news is he doesn't owe you child support for another day in the life of that child. And the kid was four. The judge also wow. told her, you may, 
because oh, because you of get, his, his, you the, get credit the for oh, all the stuff you wow. did. So he got credit for the condo, for the car, wow. for the five thousand. Because at that point, he only needed to give her about fifteen hundred dollars, and he had been doing so much more, paying all her bills. So the judge actually told her. You may want to consider a malpractice lawsuit against <laughs> your family lawyer because she should have never let you walk in. This our listeners, our listeners, the men, they gonna go back and pull all their receipts. <laughs> the women, they gonna be mad Contact at us. Me. The women yeah. gonna be mad at us. The women gonna. If you're be a man in us. Texas <laughs> and you want instruction, give me a call. I'm gonna get you to a good family lawyer. If you're a woman <laughs> in Texas. <laughs> get on a plane and go to California. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Yeah, these, these legal vehicles, these female legal vehicles, y'all gonna have my <laughs> son. The, the guys are gonna shut us, the women are gonna shut us down, and the guys are gonna be mad at us. All right, everybody, throw some facts emojis in this chat, throw us some blue hearts and some red wine glasses for all of this great information that two attorneys have shared with us tonight. Hopefully, like I said before, you know, we're gonna get in there, we're gonna be messy, we're gonna be, we're gonna, we're gonna give you the tea, we're gonna shout over each other, we're gonna cut each other off. We all do it in the gist of teaching you the law about certain things. All right. So before we roll out of this tonight, let's see. Do we have any questions? Okay. <coughs> any of my algorithms or anybody watching tonight, do you have any questions for the beautiful attorney Jordan Williams and attorney Simone Redwine? I did see one question earlier, and they were asking whether... Portia really did have like this big hefty gun toting guy come into the house. Those mm -hmm. are Simon's allegations, but the actual court records, they, they don't reflect that. And also to let you know, if he's trying to prove domestic violence, he has to prove that that man did that at hit her instruction, that she knew he was going to do it, et cetera. So I just want to be clear. She's not claiming, or Simon is not claiming that Portia actually hit her. He's just claiming she tried to frighten him with a gun toting gentleman. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about that. Do you That's think Portia knew, Al? Do you think she knew about his citizenship issues prior to the Well, marriage? listen, this is what I say. There's only so many super wealthy guys in the country. That's called rare True. air. That's top 5%. If anybody catches one of them, uh, if anybody dates one of them, if anybody marries any one of them, everybody's spilling the tea, right? Everybody knows everybody's business, and especially in Atlanta, especially <laughs> in Atlanta. It's not like he's not known. He has nightclubs. He has business ventures. He has restaurants. People know who he is, right? Okay, we have a question here that says, has anybody seen the bailiff? The bailiff has checked out on us. He's just not, he's not helping us here. All right, so we got a question from BD. Didi says, what has Diddy done that considered that's considered sex trafficking? Simone. Okay, so the sex trafficking allegation is moving women from one state to another, making them have sex, forcing them to have sex. So for Cassie, it was when she tried to leave him and he would not permit it and took her from New York to LA as one example. For the Jane Doe, who was the teenager, met her in Detroit, flew her to New York as one example. Right. And also remember, uh, 50 Cent's ex allegedly was on planes to Los Angeles to work for him and in hiring escorts to come in and have sex with her, you know, with her and him. All right. Those are alleged. Mm -hmm. Those. OK. All right. So someone said, can Simone, can Simon, sorry, can Simon get deportation? Well, that's yeah, what we that's need. That's exactly what will happen if he can't prove domestic violence. So this mm -hmm. is the point of it. If he can't show there was domestic violence committed by Portia to him, he will be deported and can never come back because of the fact that he has moral, a clause is moral turpitude because he scammed and lied about his identity. He has no other valid grounds to say he's out of there without Portia. And I think that's why he's being so making it so difficult for her is because yeah. he wants her to take him back. If she takes him back, that'll be fine. And I also think that's why he's making the big deal with uh, the real housewives. He either wants them to hire him, too, so he can tell his side. Or I feel that he probably thinks by precluding her. So one of the things he did 
was he actually sent a cease and desist to Bravo saying, you cannot film at my house. Right. Here's the thing. It's not valid, but the networks are not going to walk into a lawsuit. They right. don't want they to get involved that. in that. So yeah. they're just going to tell her, we're not going to film at your house. And more importantly, part of the unwritten rules of Real Housewives is you cannot be on the show if you do not have a love interest that we can video and record on the show. Sharice's not back on it. Sharice's a friend. So, she ain't got no man. I will Ooh. say, though, for Portia, I think the rules are different. They went and got that girl, okay? If you watch right. the last few seasons of Atlanta, everybody knows it wasn't the best it could be. They went and found this girl and said, look, I know you are a real actual housewife, but come on back, help us out. We will center the show around you, right? Yeah, so but- I rules will be a little bit different for her when she comes back. And I also just wanted to add, I do think, even though I love and adore Portia, I think she's going to have a little bit of a battle with the domestic violence, simply because of the violence we've seen from her on the show that I know Simon is going to That's what I was going to say. That's a brilliant point. Brilliant, brilliant, Counselor. Very brilliant. See, this is the deal. They did go back and get Portia. But they went back and got Portia because they wanted to film that happy newlywed life. They also wanted to 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 film that oh she might have another baby. It's it's so many things. Television you get the most ratings when you get married again, when you have a kid. That's why all the housewives have either who were married got remarried, renewed their vows. That's why all the housewives somehow got pregnant even when they couldn't get pregnant, had babies. Because those are big rating getters, right? Now, this is the deal. Right. Now that they probably were like, let's go get her. People miss her. We're down on ratings. But they didn't know all of this was under the rug or behind the curtain. And now that it is, I can't imagine that if I was Bravo, I wouldn't be thinking twice about this. You can't talk about anything that you just showed us for the last two years of why you're so happy and you're so great. You can't talk about him you can't talk about the divorce. You can't film in the house. Uh, what are you going to talk about? I mean, I, I, I feel go like ahead, Jordan. There's some movement. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, no, I said go ahead. You're, go for it. I feel like Portia has a little bit of movement here, right? So she can't talk about the divorce and Simon, but what she can talk about is her new love life or her new journey as a single mother. Right, Kenya is also a single mother. So Kenya she's been a single mother. Well, yeah, she she's been a single mother before, but <laughs> now a single mother. I, but now I think it's a little bit different because we the public know all of the circumstances surrounding the situation. Now, what I think Portia probably will do, and if I were in her shoes, I would do, I would go get good old Dennis from the hot dog stand and say, Come on, boo, let's you know, uh-huh. snuggle up. Cameras are on. Checks are coming. Let's go. Okay, no more, no more advice. From, no, no more advice from from a counselor Williams. I got you, Portia. I got you, girl. No, not, not from the not from Genius. the hot dog. Not from the hot dog stand. Why don't she go back to who she got her baby by? That guy. Please. He seems so that's cool. The hot dog man. That's oh, the that's the hot, hot dog, dog stand, man. <laughs> go to the hot dog stand and get your man. <laughs> No, I mean he don't have no money. He don't have no money. <laughs> but you know, he's, Ooh, a, he's a good dad. Y'all are mean. No, he don't y'all have no mean, money. Y'all. I have to look up his background because um his little hot dog business was in a little bit of financial issues and trouble. It may or may not have had a client that was like, Hey, this man owes me some money. May or may not, may or may not, allegedly. But allegedly. so I think that yeah, I think that would be genius because at the end of the day. Bravo wants a storyline about your relationships, too. And I also wouldn't be surprised if Simon is like, no, I want Bravo to give me my own contract and ask for some crazy right. amount of money. Because I actually don't believe Al. I don't think this man has any money. The reason I think he has any money is the level of lawsuits that I found when I ran Simon's background yeah, check. $750,000 to a jet company as one example. Just ridiculous. And here's the thing. We'll talk about this in another episode. I won't carry it over too much. But I believe when, remember, he proposed to Portia in a month. The only time a man that age, like 50 years old, you know, a wise aged person proposes in a month 
is if they got something to hide, they don't want you to find Okay, hold on now. Hold on now. Hold on now. I, I can't be the man on this panel and let you beat up on a man now. Uh, now, he proposed, but she has to accept. So don't, right. don't, don't, don't up, up, but up. he proposed in a month and because he has had to secrets. Accept, and she has to accept whether he's got secrets or not. She has to accept. So they both take Correct. responsibility in getting married to each other. Like I said, Correct. I can't imagine, mm -hmm. I can't imagine that a given how it all rolled out, she wasn't told by many people, including private investigators mm -hmm. of that man's background history. I can't tell, I can't say that being in Atlanta, that girlfriends didn't get in her ear about who and what Simon may have been. So let's not put all the responsibility just on him or her. This is a mutual decision made by two grown-ups that just wasn't smartly executed or done. Now, well, hold on. But okay. We, we're running out of time, so I, we got to wrap this one up. We can okay. finish this up. We can finish this on another day. But really quickly, I'll give you 30 seconds. Tell me what you're getting ready to say. So what I just was going to say is I believe that the prenup, because he made her think he had so much money, I believe the true prenup is going to be one where he is supposed to give her a bunch of stuff that he's never owned in the first place. And I think she might be very disappointed with the prenup because he it's going to be him saying, I'm going to give you things I don't have. And then in turn, she didn't protect herself and therefore will be liable for well, half this, of this is the deal. Now, attorneys, we cannot be that short-sighted now. We cannot be that one-sided or skewed. When you have a prenup, and I know because in my way, in my divorce, I mean, in my marriage, I had a prenup. When you have a prenup, you have to submit all of your financials. You have to submit your tax returns. You have to submit your assets. You have to submit all your holdings. You have to submit all of your company's holdings. All of that has to be submitted before you enter into that marriage or into that prenup. Now, if she didn't take the time to make sure everything that he submitted was val validated or was real, whose fault is that, Legal Beagles? I mean, I still think it's mutual because if he's falsifying documents, then, I mean, we can only ask her to do so much. If somebody, submitted to, if somebody submitted to me that you had $50 million in an account, I need to see that account statement because that's how I did it in mine. And that's what she did to me. I need to see the account statements. I need to see the appraisals from the properties. I need to see the valuations from the companies. I need to see the year end statements. I need to see all of this that's certified by a CPA and a lawyer. And what billionaire, almost billionaire man would not require that. All right, everybody. This Al, is a wait a minute, Al, that's exactly why, that's exactly Jeannie Ma's point because she didn't Okay, baby, I'm things. right. I, I got, got to go. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining in with us tonight with our incredible Legal Beagles, the wonderful entertainment uh, corporate lawyer, Jordan Williams. Put some of those hearts, blue hearts in the chat. And also the, you know, the lovely Simone Redwine. Please make sure that you tune in tomorrow again right here. You don't want to miss it uh, with our court of public opinion. Really quickly, we're going to go down through our divorces. Who are you siding with? Attorney Williams and Attorney Redwine. As it relates to Jeezy and Jeannie Mae, if you were the judge, who would you side with? Is it Jeezy or is it Jeannie Mae? I'm Attorney going Williams. I'm going with Jeezy because I think that one, we need to go ahead and enforce this prenup and let's get divorced, but also let's keep our private matters private. I'm going to go with Jeannie Ma only because I actually did his background. I saw things on there that I felt probably were not disclosed. And I look forward to seeing whether he actually disclosed what he was supposed to. All right. So for me in court of public opinion, I'm rolling for Jeezy because we're not holding our black man down. <laughs> <laughs> And also send him to her. Hurry up. All right. All right. Come on, ladies. Next one up. We have Portia and Simon's divorce. All right. If you were the judge deciding over this divorce, uh, Attorney Redwine, who are you siding with? Is it Portia or is it Simon? Portia. He's a scammer. All right, Jordan. Uh, uh, Attorney Williams, who are you siding with? Is it Portia or is it Simon? <laughs> My girl, Portia, all day. Girl, oh, I hate that that happened. <laughs> All right, in the court of public opinion, I'm going to side with Portia. Yes, Portia, because we don't like scammers. We don't like people that are fraud and people that lie, and we only want to get to the truth. All right, last one up. Ladies, 
in the case of Tiana Taylor and Iman, if you were the judge, who would you be siding of in the court of public opinion of Tony Williams? Who would you be siding? Is it Tiana or is it Iman? It's Tiana. She sounds like a great mother who really is just trying to do the right thing. This isn't even about money. This is about her child's welfare and mental health. So definitely Tiana. All right, Attorney Absolutely. Redwine. Tiana, I agree with Attorney Jordan. Absolutely. All right, in the court of public opinion, this is your judge, Al, and I'm going to rule in uh, ruling of Tiana. Tiana Taylor, we say Tiana Taylor gets that ruling right here. All right, all right, everybody, please once again put in some fax emojis, put in some red wine emojis, and put in some blue heart emojis for the legal beagles in our show tonight. Be sure to stay tuned and watch the replay tomorrow uh, when it's posted, and be sure to hit that like button Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed. And please leave a comment so that we make sure that we are engaging and teaching you the things that you need to know about the law. Have a good night, everybody.